knew that we didn't have to go back and study tape of the Giants game and study tape of the uh, the Yankees and the A's because the bottom line is the Mets did the show for us as they do so many, 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 many times. And I am going to, and we haven't been together in a while, but we're back, as Mike Greenberg would say, and better than ever. And I think that because this is going to be Met-centric, um, we have to turn it over, hand the ball off to Don LaGreca to start well. it off because it's his team. It's his love. It's his opinion that should be first. Donald. I, I was with you at the wedding, and we, we heard the reasoning for the thumbs down. You know, I, I was seeing it during the game. Uh, who knows what antics these players are doing now as far as the different things that kind of bond them, bring them together. And then Baez after the game, a 9-4 Mets win, which they did take two out of three from the Nationals, says it was a booing back at the fans for the booing they did for the player struggles like Lindor, like Baez when he came back and his 22 strikeouts and all that. And Pilar involved as well, which is a little surprising. And I was just, I was blown away. Absolutely blown away. That of the arrogance, the ignorance of these players to think that they can tell fans what to do. I don't know, Michael. Last I checked, I'm not an employee of the Mets. I don't get paid by the Mets. I don't get anything for free. When the Mets win a championship, I don't get a ring. I pay for the privilege of being a fan of the Mets. Pay for tickets. I pay for jerseys. I pay for hats. I pay for pennants. If the team wins a championship, I pay even more money to get the authentic championship hat and jacket and T-shirt. I'm invested in this team, have been since my father handed it down to me when I was born. And I plan on handing it down to Marco as he's starting to get into baseball. And Jalen. And Jalen as well, though she has shown zero interest. And maybe good for her. She'll live a longer life and have be, a, a be more entertained. We, we, we already thought she might be the smarter child. And, and I pay for this. Peter pays to be a Washington football team fan. And Michael, when he was a kid, to be a Yankee fan. We pay for the privilege to be a fan. Through the nose, we pay for the privilege to watch them on cable television, to invest the time that we put in to be a fan of the team. And we get nothing in return fiscally from the team. We just enjoy watching this team grow and play, and we cheer when they do well. And the one right that we always have is to boo when they play poorly. And believe me, the booing that they heard is nothing compared to booing that we've seen and heard in New York over the years. As a matter of fact, you can make the case, guys, that the Yankees have been more abused by their fans than the Mets have been abused by their fans. When the Yankees were four games above five hundred, they were calling up and wanting everybody's head on a platter to rebuild the team. Giancarlo Stanton, every second he's been here, has been eviscerated by the fans. Never said boo, never said a peep. So a couple of boos here from Baez, who's been here for five minutes, and he's telling me how to be a fan and what it means to be a fan. As I've gotten to say here a few times on this show, and I'm enjoying it, go scratch. Who are you to tell me or any fan what to do? Boo us back? You're making all this money, you're getting to play a kid's game, and I'm invested emotionally in this team, and you attack fans like that? That is no way to conduct yourself, and I'm glad Sandy went after him in a statement. Sounds like Steve Cohen had some nasty things to say about them as well. But, Michael, for these players to have the audacity to go back at the fans because, oh, my God, they got booed? Who are you to tell me? Uh, You're not my boss. I'm not an employee of this team. One of the great things about New York is the fans hold the players accountable. It's not like Chicago where they love everything you do. You can lose 15 games in a row. They don't care. Maybe that's one of the reasons the Cubs have one championship in the last 115 years because they don't put pressure. And the reason the cheers feel so good is because you know you've earned those cheers because the fans will turn on you if you play poorly. But, Michael, the audacity for a guy that's been here for five minutes to tell fans how to act and conduct themselves, basically spit on those fans? God, I I wish I had the guts to just be the general manager of the team just to release him. I don't don't even want to root for the guy anymore. Lindor, the same thing. I know he got abused bad by the fans when he first came here. 
You signed a 10-year contract. Believe me, you'll get over it. You'll get used to it. The one thing the fan has to do and has the ability to do is express themselves. That's all they get out of it. And to be told what to do by a guy that's been here for 16 seconds, gang, go to hell. Now, it's really interesting. Uh, I don't want to play the game I told you so, but I will. Now, remember when the season started and Lindor had a couple of bad games and the crowd was booing him. I said, he'll never forget. And everybody argued with me, oh, please, please, you're over I'm going to tell you something that probably isn't known to fans, but I've been around ball players for 35 years. They can't stand when the fans boo. They hate the fans when they boo. They want to stick it right to the fans when they boo. There's two things that ball players have in common. They don't like fans that boo. They only want to be idolized. And they hate the media. Because the media has the job of actually criticizing them when they don't perform. Do you know that over the last 162 games that he's played, Javi Baez has struck out about 240 times and walked 30? This is the guy they had to have, and they traded a first-round draft pick for. And I would agree with Don. I don't know. It's certainly not prudent. It's not the thing to do in a business sense. I'd release his ass today. Send a message to the Met fans. You're more important than this clown. And one other thing, Lindor doesn't like when they boo him. So he probably told his buddy Baez. But Lindor wanted $341 million. He said he never got booed in Cleveland. Then stay in Cleveland yeah. and take 170 You want the big money? That comes with big responsibility, and it comes with the fact that you're going to get booed. It does. Now, at the beginning of the year, I mocked Met fans for booing a guy after 10 games. They have every single right to boo now, the way this team is playing. They do. They don't have a kick coming, and they started this. They're going to start the thumbs down when, when they do something well. You notice? We haven't seen the thumbs down that often. You know why? Because they stink. Yeah. They haven't played well. They haven't played well enough. And you know what that thumb is? That thumb is a substitute for the middle finger that they're giving the fans. And then another thing, Luis Rojas, I didn't know what they were doing. Hey, Louis, you got to tap into your team, baby. Yeah. You didn't know what they were doing? You didn't ask what that was about? Really? Well, Come then on. you're lost, too. Yeah. And then over the weekend, he said, oh, I didn't know they told Syndergaard he can't throw his breaking ball. That That's news to me. This organization is as dysfunctional as ever. No, they're, they're, they're lost, Michael. They're lost. But to get back to what you said about the booing, and I know you got on the Met fans for booing Lindor, but everything you said about these players holding it against the fans for booing, not being able to take the booing, that's on them. Part of being a professional athlete is to take the slings and arrows from the media, from the fans. And and I don't know about you, and, and Peter's been in this business a long time, too. One of the reasons I like New York is because you're held accountable. So when you do get complimented, when you do get cheered, you know it's genuine. Because those same people will tell you when you're making a mistake, when you're not performing at your best, when you're not doing well. The fact that you get booed when you're playing poorly should be your incentive to do better. And when they when you get cheered later, it doesn't mean that the fans are hypocrites. It just means that they are showing the appreciation for the job that you are doing. If I work at a place and all they ever tell me is what a great job I'm doing, is that really a genuine compliment? When you we can you can fall flat on your face and they're still going to cheer you, or at least that you know you're held accountable for your actions. I'm sorry, you're making all that money. You're a professional athlete to play a kid's game. If the worst thing in the world is you getting booed by twenty, thirty thousand people, so be it. So you got to learn how to take it. I mean, I'm reading the David Wright book. Anthony DiComo did a great job with that book. I'm halfway through it. David Wright talks about how he appreciated the fans, wanted to play for the fans, and appreciated the fact that he was held accountable by those fans because those fans care. That's part of being a, a player in New York. So go to Cleveland. Go to Chicago. There's probably a reason why the Indians haven't won since 48, why the Cubs have won once since 1908. Because everything's great, and they just love baseball, and they're going to cheer for you no matter what. And you can just kind of go about your business. I like the fact 
that when you fall down, you get booed. And when you hit a home run, you get cheered. That's the way it's supposed to be. I'm supposed to feel sorry for you because you're getting booed? And then and then have to be have to be pointed at and mocked at and basically given the finger to when I do it? And, when, when and, you, you have a job. How do you think Lindor made that? What do you think that money came from, Michael? Where did that money come from? Where did that $341 million come from? It comes from the fact that the fans pay the tickets, and they pay for the parking, and they pay through the nose to be able to watch them on SNY or Yes or whatever cable outlet they're on. Do you know how much money it costs to be a fan and to keep coming back? And also the fans this year, what they've had to go through, whether it's to get tested or to wear masks on a hot day, and those are the people that you're spitting at? You're lucky to have anybody in the building, to be honest with you. And and the one thing I would say to the Mets, they got a great fan base. I mean, we sit here, we take phone calls. That fan base loves this team. I mean, they love this team. They will defend this team to the death. And you're going to mock those fans? Right. You've got some nerve. And you know what? You haven't even been here. You've been here, what, 19 days? 20 days, and you're going to knock those fans? I, I, Michael, I, I don't. You were, you, you were probably doing the Yankees. I'm trying to remember the exact moment. The game where they almost came back against the Giants, when the Giants gave them all those extra outs in the ninth inning, right? Whatever day that was. And Alonzo came up to the plate with a chance to win the game against the Giants. The Mets are having a miserable run. They're falling out of it. I was I was I was shocked and proud. The fans are all on their feet. The team's four or five games under five hundred. They're barely breathing. And they still believed and they cheered, hoping that Alonzo can get the hit to win them the game. Like they, they most of the time it is encouraging. Most of the time there is that belief that they might be able to do it. And now you win a couple of games against the lousy nationals, and then you're gonna stick it in our face? That's after, exactly after going what I was two, about to say. You, you're, you're sticking out your right. chest because you beat a junior right. varsity team? You go 2-11 and 11 against the Giants and the Dodgers, the best in baseball, all right? And you get booed and you get ripped and all that, and you get swept by the San Francisco Giants, and you can't get the tying run despite the fact the Giants are dropping the ball all over the field, can't get a hit with runners in scoring position, then you lose a miserable game to start the series against the Nationals at a time, Michael, where they've got to sweep these series. They've got to go on a toot here. They can't afford winning series isn't going to be enough. They've got to rattle off seven, eight, nine in a row against these lousy teams. And then you win a couple of games in a row against the Nationals, and, and, and you've accomplished something? That you get to stick it in my face as if I, I, I didn't pay attention to the 2-11 and 11 you went the previous 13 games? Come on, please. I've I got to tell you this. And I don't know if you and Peter agree with this. As I said, Met fans are loyal. They're dedicated. They're Met fans from birth till death. That's just the way it's built. Most of the fan bases in the city are like that. If this guy comes up to the plate at any time during the season, the rest of the season, and gets nothing but loud boos, you are all stooges. So I got just what he wanted. This guy should be booed out of town and how smart is Javi Baez by the way he just took the Mets off his list of free agency they'd be idiots if they signed this guy I don't think he was ever on the Yankee list he probably took every big market team off the list he probably cost himself tens of millions of dollars opening his dumb mouth it plays into a narrative though that could be good if he goes back to Chicago how so just like, just like uh, you know, I, I didn't even like being gone at all. They're, those fans were terrible. I'm so happy to be back here. You know, he's. It's very rare that you leave a team that you've been with for a long time, then you show up somewhere else and completely annihilate their fan base. It's unusual. I don't know that I've ever seen it. And I, I just don't know. Like, I give the Mets fans such credit. You know, uh, as I mentioned last week, Michael, those fans that came out in the heat to watch the documentary, the Thirty for Thirty, which comes out in a couple of weeks. The real Mets fans, man, they're great. The, the level of suffering, though, there, there's no end to it. It's just always something. Like, and now they have an entire new regime. We always talk about things rotting from the top. The head was cut off and replaced. They have a new everything at the top. And the same nonsense is happening. It's so weird. Hey, it, it, it's such a great point, Peter. Because if you pay attention, you'd see how 
diehard this fan base is, all right? And to be a Met fan's tough, not just because of all the losing, but you got the other team in town and their fans that enjoy the situation that you're in. So you got to hear the buddy goes to school and has got to hear from the Yankee fan friend of his how awful his team is. And you got to live with the Yankees who are in the playoffs every single year and the Mets that are just trying to get their due. So it's tough enough to be able to be a fan of this team. And now being attacked by your own players? The stuff that they have gone through? I mean, chapter and verse, Michael. Chapter and verse since 86. The Mets are the only business in town that can actually think the customer is always wrong. I mean, think about that. They're, they're throwing urine on their customers. That's what the players did yesterday. The people that pay the freight. And then, you know, Sandy Alderson released that statement out, out of probably sheer terror that one of the players could be that dumb to say that. But Steve Cohen hasn't said anything of any import yet. He sent out a tweet. Wasn't it fun when the only drama was the black jerseys? Come on, Steve, step up and say something. Well, I guess he spoke to Joel Sherman from what I saw. Did he say good? What did he say to Joel? In the post, I'm, I'm just going to punch it up here in response, just saying that they're young players and they don't know any better, and they'll be. They'll Bobby be Baez to. is not a young well, player. I mean, none of them are young young players. These aren't kids. Now, the only thing young about them is the time they've spent with the Mets. Right? They haven't been here long. What, what the, the three major culprits of this are Pilar, Lindor, and Baez, all first-year Mets. So it's not like any of these guys have been here for any length of time to get to know the fan base, to get to know what it's like to play in New York, to get to know what it's like to be a New York Met, for better or worse. But he had said that you know they'll, they'll be talked to. So he, he kind of had like a stern warning. But again, we'll see what happens. I guess they're going to have it. They're going to talk to them, and I'm sure there'll be some sort of a statement from Baez about how he apologizes or whatever. But the damage is already done. Yeah, that that and, that and, that milk, Michael, very and, much out of the udder. And, and also, too, and, and and I'm I'm a fan, and sometimes I feel like I've got to always disclaimer this because I do think he's a good pitcher, and I think he's a good guy. But Marcus Stroman's got to get a clue too. Oh, I mean, he, he's always the aggrieved party, and he blames the media for everything. Always. I'm telling you, I'm telling you guys, and all the listeners too. They hate fans that boo, and they despise the media. They don't want the media on their team. Planes. They despise the media because the media's job is to point out exactly what's happening and not be cheerleaders. There are there are players that despise the broadcasters who have to say exactly what's going on in front of them rather than wave pom poms. I'm telling you. Marcus Stroman is obsessed with the media. When this came out last night, he was saying, oh, the media is misrepresenting it. How, how are they misrepresenting it? The guy said they were booing the fans. That's not misrepresent, misrepresent. I'd love to get Marcus Stroman on the air. Marcus Stroman's a, a really smart guy. The guy went to Duke, and all he does is blame the media. But how do you blame the media? Baez said what he said. I know. How is it, it being blown out? See, and, and the thing is, he's a dookie. Which Peter would probably tell you is one of the reasons why he's the way he is. That's right. But also, he's a New Yorker. Like, the media is just basically explaining what just happened. Nobody's spinning any negative. Baez told you why the thumbs down. What, what's, does he think that, is he living in Louisville? Does he think that the, the media is all supposed to be waving pom poms for the team? Guys, you haven't accomplished anything anyway. Do you, they, do you realize the Yankees go, don't get the benefit of the doubt? 27 championships. Go to the playoffs every single year. Lose five in a row. They get destroyed by their own fan base. They don't catch a break. Why should the Mets catch a break? You haven't won anything since 1986. You had a division that was being handed to you on a silver platter, and you threw it away, and you want breaks from the media? You want pom-poms from the fans? Give me a break. Come on, Marcus. Come back to us. Come on, Baez. Come back to us. If the big, bad New York Yankees can't catch a break, why should the Mets, who haven't accomplished anything, haven't done a thing? I'm telling you, I don't want to keep repeating it. They never forget. And I told you they won't forget. And they'll hate you forever for it. And they paint all of the fans with the but, same but see, broad brush because it could be 10,000 out of 50 that are booing. And they're going to think that 50,000 people I, booed them. And it doesn't motivate them. It ticks them off. But I don't like where you're going with this, Michael, because then it comes back at the fans for being wrong for booing no, the door in the first no. place. 
Well, they're they're, the they, shouldn't have, they should not have booed Lindor after 10 games. But that, that, I, I stand by that. All right, but that's fine. But I'm not going to sit here after they basically got dumped on by the players and to be saying, well, this is your fault because you, no, you booed Lindor back when I you don't got want that, no, 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 I don't, no, no, no. I don't want that to be taken the wrong way. I'm just telling you, if you think you boo and you motivate, you don't. But, but I don't they hate you. But here's the thing you've got to understand if you're a player or if you're a non-fan. The booing isn't to motivate. The booing is a visceral reaction to what they're seeing on the field. Some guy paid 400 bucks for tickets, $35 for parking, is sitting there with a mask watching a guy that just signed a $341 million contract go over 20. How is he supposed to respond? Go get him, Francisco. We got your back. Or well, is he going to boo? What I, what I said, he's a fan. What I said earlier, they have every right to right. boo now. The, the team has been terrible for a long stretch of time. They've dropped it, dropped out of first place and really close to the, uh, the border of dropping out of the race. Although Don and Peter would say, so I still, I'm still going to hold out that maybe they make a run. But after 10 games, you think that Francisco Lindor would ever forget you boot him after right. 10 games? And, and all I do is go back to 2004. There's no way you handle it. Even if you think differently, you could think, I hate them, I hate them, I hate them. But you don't say it publicly, and you don't do a, a, a public thing where you do thumbs down, which in effect is giving them the finger. Derek Jeter had won four championships in 2000, by 2004. Four. He'd been to five World Series. He was a captain of the team, and he went off on this long 0 for 22 um, uh, slide, and the fans were booing him at Yankee Stadium. Four World Series he gave them. And you know what he said? I'd have booed me too. Right. Because that's the way you handle it. You don't boo the fans back, you clowns. No. Listen, I'm not And when expect- Jack McDowell gave the middle finger to the Yankee fans, when they, he got fined by the Yankees. They wouldn't put up with it. You know why? Because that's the paying customer. Those are the ones that pay your salary. You don't like to believe that, but if there weren't fans and there weren't media and there wasn't SNY and there wasn't yes, you know what? You'd make the same money as somebody who's a curler. That's yeah. exactly what you'd make. I, but I just I, I just didn't want to come back to them like, well, this is what happens when you boo. No, this is what happens when you come to New York. Be better. All right? This is what happens. And, it, and New York is not the only place that this happens, Michael. But it's not Chicago. It's not when when LeBron was in Miami and that kid was you know clapping as they were leaving the court, you know it's not it's not to that point, but but the fans are holding the players accountable. It's on you. Be better. Deal with it. This you know, is I, I, the fans should be not only the fans have the right to boo Michael, but that is always going to be a reaction when you are completely and totally invested in the team and the players take it personal because all they do is think about themselves. But you're not necessarily booing the player; you're booing the situation because a lot of those outs for Lindor were outs with runners in scoring position in games that they could have won. You know, so a lot of those strikeouts for Baez are in key situations when the Mets hit away from winning a game and getting back into this race. So I'm sorry, we're not going to go get them next time type of town. That's not the way it is. But I tell you what, if you win here, you're never forgotten. You're loved and adored. And that's you're going to hear Paulo, those cheers. And you're going to hear Paulo them forever. Said. That Paulo Duca said that on Twitter. You're going to get booed here, but when you succeed here, you're king. This is what Steve Cohen said to Joel Sherman on the post. They hit the third rail, they hit the third rail though, by messing with fans. And it's unacceptable. Hopefully this is a teaching moment and they will learn from this. Imagine a guy like Javi Baez who has won a World Series at the Cubs. Francisco Lindor, who's known as Mr. Smile. They can't handle this. This has to be a, a teaching moment. Shame uh, on them. And the- shame on the Met organization for having this endemic thing throughout this organization where this happens all, this kind of stuff happens all the time because all you have to do is look across town. And Don and Peter, you know this for a fact. There have been very few players in the history of this franchise that have been booed as long and loud, as consistently as Giancarlo Stanton. And has he ever said a word? Has he ever said a word? They boo boo the hell out of Gary, too. A lot of guys have gotten it, repeatedly. I mean, and listen, I'm no Yankee fan. I'm not, listen, let's just be real, though. There, There is a gauntlet laid down when you join the Yankees about how things are going to be. And yes, Michael, I'm sure some of that comes from the 27 championships. But some there's something else to that, too, that goes beyond that, to the way that uh, Brian Cashman operates when they get new talent on this team and everyone fits in. 
This is just such well, a recurring thing for the Mets. And, and and that you just hit on something, Peter, without even knowing you hit on. That's what they look for. You know, Brian Cashman and a lot of other good general managers in New York will look and say, is this guy built for New York? Is he going to be a handle getting booed? Is he going to be able to handle all the media? And even if it's a player that isn't as good as that player, they'll go on and get him because they know if I get the better player but he can't handle New York, what good is it going to be? No, going and screening to make sure if they go 0 for 30, he's going to handle getting booed. He's going to handle the scrutiny of the media. Not everybody can handle playing here in New York. So you got to think about that, too, when you bring a player in here. It's, I, I've got a take on, on this meeting that Sandy's going to have with the players and what I think he's going to say and what I hope he says. We'll come, we'll come back with that. We'll take your phone calls as well. The Michael K. Show on 